Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. And a while back, a company called Noasis reached out to me about covering their tool, Noasis GUI. This is a user interface middleware. And I have to admit, going back through the back catalog of videos on this channel, I have literally never covered anything like this. I've covered GUI toolkits, things like uh, Dear I Am GUI, uh, which is more made for creating debug tools and your tooling and such, not for creating real-time game interfaces. So that's what Noasis GUI is all about. If you wanna go ahead and check it out, it is available at noasisengine.com. We'll do a quick overview of what it's all about, but the easiest way to really understand what Noasis is all about, if you're an old timer like myself, you may remember there was a product called Scaleform. It absolutely dominated the industry for years. It was the interface for AAA games. And then weirdly, Autodesk bought it and pretty much killed it. Um, but it was using Adobe Flash to create user interfaces. Well, Noasis takes a very similar approach, but it's using something called uh, XAML, which is Microsoft's product for making WPF. So we'll get back to that in just a second. But the easiest way to really understand Noasis is you can think of it as a modern day uh, vector-based version of scale form. So that's kind of the easiest way probably to wrap your head around it. So let's get into a little bit more of the details. One of the very cool things about it, it is a C++ based library. You can integrate it in your own native code. All you really have to do is provide it a render context that it will do the rendering on. Uh, it is real time based. It is multi-platform with desktop, mobile, console, and web support. And it uses XAML. The nice thing about using XAML is then you can take care of and use Blend for creating your vector based user interfaces. Blend has been shipping with Visual Studio, I think since Visual Studio 2015. If you've installed Visual Studio, you probably have Blend installed and may not know what it's all about. We'll showcase it briefly today, but it is a very powerful tool for making user interfaces. And that's what the interfaces are made with using um, Noasis GUI. Uh, again, it is entirely vector based. The nice thing about being vector based is that it is resolution independent. So if you make a user interface for the Switch, for mobile, for 4K devices, for Retina, for whatever, it should scale nicely. On top of that, as I mentioned earlier on, it uses XAML, the markup uh, that Microsoft created for Microsoft's uh, WPF or Windows Presentation Foundation, I think is what that acronym stands for. And then once upon a time, they had Silverlight, which was kind of their competitor to Flash. Now, Silverlight and Flash aren't exactly around these days, but XAML still very much is. It's used for WPF, which is the uh, user interface programming mechanism of .NET for the most part. Uh, you can see how the workflow goes here. We'll get into this a little bit later on, but basically you are, your UI designer creates the UI using Blend. And the neat thing about this is you can have code behind logic on it. So you can bind uh, code events to the UI elements. So you don't need to have the UI designer know anything about code. They just hook it up and then a programmer can come in and use code behind C++ uh, C sharp uh, to, to call that code. Gnosis GUI sits in the middle, and of course you've got the user's app. So Gnosis can be used in your own native code. It can be used in managed code, but it can also be used in Unity and Unreal Engine, which we will check out in just a second. You see an example of it. One of the cool things is, once again, data binding. And we're gonna get into an area that I used to know a lot better than I did, which was design patterns, specifically MVVM. So model view, view model, I, I don't remember. There used to be MVVM, MVVM, P and VC, there's all kinds of these ways of basically abstracting your user interface away from your data. So you can think of it, the simplest way is model, data, view, presentation, okay? So think about that, that's what the M and the V stand here. And what it basically means is that Noasis is enabling you to abstract away the UI from the implementation, which is again, what allows you to have such situations like this, where you have the artist working on, you know, images and fonts and so on, but you can have a guy doing the UI work in Blend, but he doesn't need to know anything about code or the game behind the scenes or anything like that, because you can hook it all up here. And that abstraction is done via views. So we're gonna go back, we'll see views in action when we look at the Unity and Unreal examples. Now, the key thing I want to point out, though, before I move on to the presentation side of things, is this is a battle-tested solution, as you may be able to tell by this screenshot right here. Yes, Gnosis is used to make the user interface for Baldur's Gate 3, which is perhaps my single most anticipated game uh, coming soon. So uh, that is a pretty challenging UI to be able to create, and that is what powers it. In fact, that's where we're going to finish things, and we'll get into the setup side of things. So you can see here the platforms it's supported on Windows, Mac, OS, Linux. 
Linux, UWP iOS, Android, Xbox, PlayStation, Switch Stadia, WebGL, and Raspberry Pi. And then you can see here some of their customers. And we're talking a pretty big who's who of customers here. Riot Games, Larian Studios, Microsoft, Bonfire Studios, Paradox Interactive, 2K, Capcom. So it, again, is a very well and industry tested product. Now, final thing before we get into the presentation side of things, uh, do be aware you can actually do everything we are looking at today. So it is free for indie users if you make less than 100K a year. Uh, if you want to go ahead and purchase it, you are gonna have to reach out to them for the uh, details on that. But everything you're going to see today uh, is going to be using this indie version, which is completely free and has a number of different platforms. You can use it uh, royalty-free in your game, again, as long as you make less than 100K euros uh, per year. So let us jump in and we're going to look at, at both Unity and Unreal Engine. We'll see how things are implemented. So here we are in Unreal Engine. We're actually going to showcase the same example running across Unreal Engine in the Unity game engine as well as in C++. And it's an inventory example. You can grab this off of GitHub if you wish. And here it is running in action. You can see it's kind of like an RPG style uh, interface where you've got a character, they've got various different items available inventory here. You can see it can only be put into certain slots. And you'll notice as I drop it in place, the DPS or whatever on the other side changes. So you have data binding, you have uh, binding to game objects and so on in this particular example. So let's go ahead and see how this is implemented in Unreal Engine. And it's pretty straightforward on the whole. We come here to our blueprints and check out our level blueprint. And you're going to see uh, when this is created, we can just come, basically come in, event begin play. We create our view. Uh, the view is again, the MVVM part. The, the, this is the display part. This is the uh, thing that your designer will ultimately create using blend, which we will see in a second. Uh, it is added to the viewport. You give it um, UI focus and that is pretty much it. Pretty straightforward on the whole. And now let's go take a look at that view. So we're in the inventory example. We'll open this guy up right here. And you're going to notice there's an extension here for no assist view. Open this one up. And when you look at it, the way it works inside of Unreal, it's blueprints. So if you're working with no assist inside Unreal, it is just straight up blueprint data. And you've got all the logic here for uh, looping through all of the items. Uh, you've got uh, on drop or on drag source and so on. So you can see if something can logically be dropped or whatever. But the nutshell here is when you are working with Unreal Engine, you're using Unreal Engine type tools. You're using blueprints, you're using uh, data tables, that kind of stuff. And it's a very integrated and straightforward experience. But you're gonna notice here, the Noasis view has main window XAML as the data on the back end. That is the part that the designer creates in Blend. And we will get to that in just a second. But first, we're going to take a voyage through Unreal Engine land. And what we're going to see here is pretty much the exact same thing. But what you're going to notice is it is implemented in a very different manner. So I'm going to go ahead and run this, and you're going to get exactly the same result. It is uh, a user interface for doing inventory, the exact same user interface, actually fed by the exact same XAML file. You can see the XAML file right here, although you'll see XAML has a little bit more integration directly inside of the Unity game engine than it does in Unreal. But at the same time, you still, you work with that one in Blend. So you can see here at the same project, I can give him a weapon, uh, I can give him a shield. You can see it, it changes his DPS. Uh, we could give him some pants. Who needs pants? All right, so you're seeing it knows what kind of item it is. It knows which slots those can go in. That is all being handled while in the Unreal Engine, it was handled using blueprints. You're gonna notice here though, in when you're working in Unity land, uh, this guy is applied as scripts attached to main camera. So here, Nanoasis view is being defined using Unity scripts. So in this land, you're using C sharp, uh, traditional scripted objects like you are used to in Unity land. So you're setting it up right here. And then you got a number of things for handling the view for these are your drag and drop handlers for that management. So you see here, straightforward, it's C sharp code. And then you have main window.xaml, which is the user interface that is crafted outside of Unity or Unreal. It's the exact same file, by the way. So if you switched game engines, all of your user interfaces would stay the same. And you'll notice here, you have, uh, let's open this guy up right here. You have a Visual Studio project called inventory-blend.sln. And what we're gonna do is open that guy up in Blend. Microsoft Blend is a powerful visual editor for creating user interfaces. It's been shipping with Visual Studio for a decade plus now, and it's kind of an unsung hero. This is what you use to create WPF uh, 
front ends. The, the user interface for your WPF powered applications are created and they use this format, this XML format called XAML. Now you don't need to worry about this. This is the code that's being generated for this UI. This is the same UI we saw in Unreal Engine and in Unity. They ran off the exact same file, this output, this XAML file right here, but your designer doesn't need to worry about that. They create everything visually. They can drag and drop things in. They can position things. They can grab any element here. For example, this inventory item here, let's say I wanted to change the color of it. I literally just come in here and select a new color for it. They don't need to worry about the details. This is all vector based, so it should be able to scale across devices. You can set uh, positions relative as opposed to absolute on the screen. So you can scale across multiple devices, multiple aspect ratios, and so on. And this identical file, this XAML file that we are generating here, as you can see, the hierarchy of it over here will look identical in Unreal Engine or in Unity as we have already seen. And you'll see over here, we've got a number of different controls we can work with, styles, effects, uh, animations, you name it. This is a very powerful tool. Now there is a ton here. I'm not gonna go into the full details of what Blend is capable of. That's a whole video on its own. Just know Blend makes it so your visual designer, the people doing your user interface, don't need to even get into the game engine. They don't need to worry about code. They don't need to do anything. They just visually work on what they want and they get exactly the same results. It, that doesn't matter if the results are exported out to Unity or to Unreal Engine or even it can easily be implemented into your own code base. This is a C++ based framework after all. Here you can see the, uh, the native examples here. This is a C++ project. You can download it. It is the exact same example we've looked at uh, for Unreal and Unity using the exact same uh, XAML file for the interface. You can see the same logic, same code, everything else. The only difference is it was implemented using C++. There's also a uh, managed example. So if you want to work in C Sharp or you want to integrate it in your own custom C Sharp based game engine, there's a Visual Studio project for that as well. In terms of supported render backends, uh, DirectX, uh, Vulkan, OpenGL, and then on iOS and macOS, there is also a metal renderer. Now we've got this thing up and running. I'm going to showcase one more tool to you, uh, and that is the um, Neosys GUI inspector. And what this enables you to do is connect to running versions. So you see here, we've got Unity, uh, Unreal, and here is our C++ example. I'm gonna go ahead and connect to it. So if we open this application back up, you're gonna notice in the background, we're getting frame rate details, how long it's taking, the amount the exact amount of resources things are using under the performance. You can drill down into um, the various different controls that go together to make up. Again, this will match to our XAML hierarchy perfectly. So you can debug into and divine some more details about how your project is running, uh, how the performance is going. You have a debug console available to you. So if you want to make sure that your UI is running as fast as possible, remember I said earlier on, they aim to be less than one millisecond on their frame updates for it. This is the debugging tool. You can connect in to any of your running applications, no matter which platform you're working from using the inspector. So again, you see here, I could connect it to the Unity or the Unreal version in addition to my C++ project. And that, ladies and gentlemen, uh, is the code that you see here. It's pretty straightforward on the whole. Uh, there's nice documentation for it. In the C++ side of things, instead of using C Sharp or Blueprints to handle the drag and drop in this case, you're just implementing it using fairly straightforward and simple C++ code, or in the managed example, C Sharp code. So you can definitely integrate uh, no Assist into whatever engine or language you're working with, your own custom engine, or of course, you can use it with Unreal or Unity. One final thing to mention, there's also a tool out there for those of you that are using After Effects. Now you're not gonna get as much functionality for exporting as you would if you work directly in Blend, uh, but if you wanna create your, um, your uh, render effects and animations using Adobe After Effects, there is this plugin available as well, showcasing how that works. So this is uh, called Lottie uh, No Assist, I believe, uh, and that is available for uh, using After Effects animations with uh, the no assist framework as well. So that ladies and gentlemen is no assist GUI by no assist, a very, um, again, unique and interesting tool out there. Um, a, the nice thing is high performance. It's uh, not engine specific. So if you wanted to port to a different engine, no problems at all. Uh, again, nicely and easily integrated into your own version. But when you're working with the tool, it works like that tool. So it, your Unity developers feel like they're working in Unity. Your Unreal Engine developers feel like they're working in Unreal Engine. They've extended both engines to make the experience 
pretty seamless. Nice thing too, on top of that, uh, it's got nice solid documentation. I don't know why that link brought me here. Uh, but if you go into the developer section here, once you've registered, the documentation is quite solid. If you want to get into the native side of things here, uh, you do have step-by-step -step walks through how the C++ architecture works, how to set up the code, how, how things work. You're going to find uh, there is full examples showcasing uh, integration, and it's like 20 or 30 lines of code to get it up and running, uh, which is quite impressive on the whole. Again, we've also got documentation uh, for, if I go back one more, you can see you've got managed as well, in addition to Unity and Unreal Engine. Uh, and then they have uh, tutorials that are kind of applied to everything. These will teach you how to use, you know, WPF uh, blend tools, uh, how to set up various, well, you can, you can see what's in front of you. There's a ton of uh, documentation to walk you through everything you need to know. You have full animation support in there. You can do 3D transforms. You can do a ton of stuff with Blend and then have that all just kind of exported out. So you, can, you don't need a coder to handle this stuff. A designer can just do it all, which is pretty nice. So again, if you do want to go ahead and check it out, uh, if you make less than $100,000 a year, or basically you just want to go ahead and evaluate it, uh, you can do so uh, quite simply. And if you want to purchase it, reach out to them. Uh, their contact information is available right here and yes that is no assist GUI again I think this is the first game UI tool I've covered on the channel again I covered uh, UI toolkits for creating like game tools but for actually creating a UI in the game itself uh, no assist kind of has the the industry to themselves other than of course the um, the engine specific implementations that various different game engines did out there uh, but as a um, middleware provider they're definitely the front runner in this space and if there's anyone else you can recommend let me know comments down below uh, but yeah ladies and gentlemen that is no assist GUI let me know what you think comments down below talk to you all later and goodbye